Michael Jordan became the greatest player of all time before he ever won a championship. I want everybody to understand that. You know, I'm not going to go out there and, and, and take it lightly on him. Uh, you know, the job is to go out there and be my best in the game. So that's what I'm going to do. Melvin, let me, let me ask you this, Dar, what has it been like for you? Um, you know, typically you go to a new team, you sign with a new uh, organization, and you end up having to start to learn a new system, learn a new coaching staff, learn new teammates. To, to have to do that virtually right now, what kind of an adjustment has that been? <laughs> um, it's just tough because, you know, it's really hard to, you know, try to build bonds. Um, you know, with your teammates and your friends, uh, or your new teammates over, you know, over what they call it, Zoom calls. Yeah. So, you know, so, so it's just like, man, it's, it's just tough. Um, cause I still work out with like some of the charger players, um, that I'm close friends with and, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just tough, man. It's just extremely tough. And I mean, obviously, this COVID is just kind of destroying everything. Um, but right now, you know, you just kind of got to deal with what you can deal with. Do you now incorporate any of Deontay Wilder's boxing workouts into your own? Um, the crazy thing is, I actually do a little boxing. I, I actually do a little boxing, um, you know, for training, just because it's a different type of work. Um, but I mean, what he had me doing, I, you know, not to that full extent. Uh, but I do like to implement like a little boxing in my training, hundred percent. What they do though is is just next level. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lyle Lyle from Oshkosh asks, did you have a mentor growing up? I really didn't have that mentor, like you know, just like a player that kind of. You know, kind of helped show me the ropes. My mentors was kind of like my cousins, but, um, you know, as far as, like, what I needed to do and how I needed to do it, it was all – it was just me learning for the first time. I really – like I said, I really didn't have no one show me the ropes. It was kind of just me experiencing this journey of, you know, what and what not to do on my own with, you know, the vice of what my parents and, you know, my older cousins could help with. Jackie wants to know, what do you miss most about Kenosha? What I miss most, uh, my definitely my family and friends. Just you know, you know, being in California, um, for the past five years, you know, I I love the people in California. They're awesome people, but it's nothing like home. And you know, I grew up with a lot of those people. A lot of those people knew me before I was, you know, Melvin the football player. So I just really enjoy everyone back home, um, and especially my family and friends. You know, I miss my grandma cooking as well. So. I get that when I come home often. Absolutely. Jalen Jalen Rose has joined us. Yes, Man, it is. why you ain't come to the Lions? Man, the Lions <laughs> weren't talking to me. Man, you're a beast. Congratulations <laughs> on all your success. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Jalen, did you ever play any organized football? Did you play midget football? Did you ever play? Was there a foot, Detroit Southwestern High School? Any football? Whoa, Whoa you're going to love this story. Melvin, you're going to die laughing when you hear this. I love football more than basketball. My birthday is January 30th, and it used to fall on Super Bowl weekend. I used to think that was my birthday party, but they were Super Bowl parties. But anyway, so I used to play pick them up, mess them up, growing up all of the time. I played football until ninth grade. And I was a defensive end. I was an offensive lineman. And we made it to, like, like the, the, the championship when I was, like, in eighth grade. And I thought I was being tough. So I didn't wash my pants. So I showed up with the dirty pants on the previous game like I was being rough and tough. And my coach got <laughs> so mad at me. And we lost the game and he blamed it on me. But I thought I was tough, Mel. Oh, That's a bad coach right there, man. <laughs> Damn it on one play? Oh, yeah. Man. He, bl he blamed it on me. 
what character traits or perspectives do you think help youth getting through difficult times? I, I think uh, in the era of social media in particular, where you sometimes forget it's just an app on your phone that you're inviting Instagram, you're inviting Twitter, you're inviting Facebook, you're inviting Snap, you're inviting everyone into your life. I would just say, try to find a way to block out any noise that stops you from getting to your goals. Don't use social media to your detriment, use it to your benefit. And then lastly, this is the tough love one, Melvin. Sometimes your critics are right. And you got to be able to accept it and own it and improve and then ignore it when they're hating or they're jealous. I think it's just about, really, it's just about having a strong mindset. Um, like you said, you know, sometimes they're right. And, you know, sometimes they're wrong and they're just hating and they need, you know, they, they someone just needs something, you know. Just, if you have a strong mindset, just, I feel like if you could just really just, right from wrong and you know if people hating on you and you know if they're right you know if you know have is a weakness and you know you, you know what you need to work on you know this you know that but just having a strong mindset can get you know can get you through it all um because you know people are going to say hurtful things people are going to say things that you dislike um not every time you should respond um depending on what you say i, I fall victim sometimes to that but um you just have to i, I think a strong mind can get you through a lot and you know, I, I feel like that's one thing that you have to have you know throughout your entire life do you guys do either of you guys have a quote or a saying that helps you get through tough things I, I first off let me just say this you go ahead Melvin I'm gonna defer to you because you you about to blow up this year have a great season and go on to be a pro bowler or all pro and a hall of famer and you ain't never been a lion I'm a little disappointed in you so go ahead <laughs> hey man I ain't got nothing with that. <laughs> I got a good running back over there. I got a good yeah, carry back. on is a beast, and we drafted. I know, but we drafted yeah, two guys to play three downs. That's what you do. I've watched the game. Go ahead, man. Uh, I don't have a quote, honestly. Um, not off the top of my head. I'm not the biggest quote guy. Um. I'm not really the biggest quote guy. I'm not even going to lie to you. For me to sit here and say, I got a quote to help me get through hard times, I don't. I just kind of remember the hard times, and I just don't kill you, make you stronger. So I just, I guess you could, you could use that right there. You don't kill you, make well, you stronger. J Let's J use that. <laughs> Jalen's got a quote for you, Melvin. It's called, give the people what they want. That's a cure-all. Well, in most cases, that's the right idea. In most cases, that's the right. sometimes it might not be the best advice based on what what's going on in the environment. I got a I got a good one for you, Walsh. And I appreciate you putting this together. Shout out to the Boys and Girls Club in Chi Town. Here's what I'll say because sometimes, especially being from an urban environment, you lose your innocence early because you're exposed to so many adult things as a, at a juvenile age. So I'll say, recognize that people come into your life for four reasons. To add, subtract, multiply, or divide. <laughs> Choose wisely. Absolutely. Choose wisely. Hey, hey Jalen, you, uh, you and Melvin have this in common. You played in Denver. Melvin's on his way to Denver. What, what What is it like playing in that city? What kind of sports town is that? What, what has he got in store for him there? Oh, you about to you about to get it in. It's about to be great for you. <laughs> and, 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 and the thing is, I was there when they had, and I'm just going to say this, Wolves. Remember, I'm putting this on wax. He's about, he about to be the best running back they had since Terrell Davis. Yep. And, 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 and we know what he accomplished, like MVP, Super Bowl winning type things. That's why I'm mad he didn't come to the Lions. Like he, he's he about the ball with them. They got a great D, a terrific pass rush, strong corners. Like he 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 about to be getting some carries and some <laughs> catches out the backfield. It's about to be on. So 
they're about to love you and appreciate you, and uh, it's going to be well deserved. All right. I, uh, I, I saw in the last dance how close your team was to retiring MJ. How would his legacy be different if the Pacers won that game seven? It's a good question. It is a good question. And, you know, I want to feel like it would be much different, but Michael Jordan became the greatest player of all time before he ever won a championship. I want everybody to understand that. You look back at any footage, Larry Bird, Michael, uh, uh, Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, before Matt, uh, Michael Jordan won a championship, he was the greatest player of all time. So I feel like the world wouldn't be much different if he had five and I had one, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I would hope that everybody would still be in harmony and be enthusiastic about his five and, and really celebrate my one like it's five. <laughs> Melvin, Matt wants to know your feelings about signing with a division rival. Um, mm. I mean, that's cool. You know, I don't want to guess too much. Um, it's going to be dope. I mean, it's crazy, man, because, you know, I've, I've been with the Chargers for five years, um, and I, you know, built so many relationships with those guys, man. So, you know, just, you know, going every day, blood, sweat, and tears with those guys, man. Uh, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. And now, um, you know, to be looking at them across the way, knowing that I'm going to be going into battle, you know, with a whole different squad, um, it's going to be interesting, man. But, you know, it is what it is. That's part of the game. Uh, so for some guys, it's not that way. For some guys, it is. And for me, it is. So, you know, I'm not going to go out there and, and, and take it lightly on them. Uh, you know, the job is to go out there and do my best and win the game. So that's what I'm going to do. But, uh, you know, I'm going to definitely smile and talk a little trash. Whoa. I know they're going to talk it to me. So, Melvin, I really follow the game. And like I said, I love football more than I love basketball. And I want to ask you a question about perseverance. How did you stay disciplined doing your job when you showed that you was one of the best backs in the league, your squad didn't give you the cash that you deserve, they minimized your role to try to basically undercut your salary, you ended the season as a professional, and then you left in the offseason because you know that you have something to prove. Like, yeah. can you please tell them how, how you still showed up at work and was professional and was on time and how now you're about to show them how that sacrifice pays off when you're professional? Man, because, you, know, you know, it's just, to me, I take the game seriously, you know. And, you know, I just put a lot of all into it um, behind closed doors. And, you know, I just, I just... I figure, like, man, no matter what, you just got to give it your all. Um, you know, whether it's in, whether you, you study, you putting extra hours in, whether you're working out in some type of way, form, shape, form, or fashion, um, you just got to give it everything you have, give the game everything you have, just because, just, you know, it's just out of respect to the ones that, you know, that, that gave it all before us. And that's just how I look at it. Um, you know, any any time I put any effort towards, you know, the game I love, I try to give it my all because, you know, the – the, the worst fear is being done and, and sitting back and being like, well, I didn't give it everything I had. And you're going to run into some things that it's just, you know, it's just it just looks all bad and it's dark. Um, whether it's, you know, it's a holdout, whether it's a team not giving you this, not giving you that. Um, regardless, if you show up in that workplace, you got to do your job. And, you know, you got to do it to the best of your ability. And that's just how I, that's just kind of how I look at it. Um, you know, I love the game and you know, I love the people that played it before me, and I try to respect them, you know, with the utmost respect by giving it my all, like I said. So, I, you know, I feel like it would be a discredit to them if I ever showed up and did anything and gave less than what, it, you know, what was expected, you know. So that's just kind of how I look at it, and that's just kind of how I approach it, and that's just my mindset. A lot of fun hanging out with you guys. Thanks for joining us on ESPN's One Team Speaker Series. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.